it is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We are back again, the festive of 2022, and we are bringing you nothing but the best of home cooked meals in different chefs' kitchens. They are bringing us spectacular starters, mains, and of course desserts that you can prepare in the comfort of your home and enjoy this New Year's and of course this Christmas. But firstly, starting off with someone who is very special, an all-round winner in everything that she does, a talented mom, sister, aunt, but most importantly, in this episode, chef. I am talking about none other than Justina Bain. She is joining us in the kitchen today to give us a lowdown of what she will be preparing this festive season. Please do stick with us as we enjoy all the delicious food in her kitchen. Justina Bain is a lady of 33 years of age, running a small business called Kia Ora Eswatini, which started in 2017, where she sells gift hampers and cakes and also does catering. She is a mom, wife, chef, entrepreneur, virtual assistant and an author. She is the runner-up winner of the Pick and Pay Luju Cook-Off Master Chef 2022. Justina is a lover of good food and more especially loves cooking it. She recently launched her cookbook, Home Cooked Meals with Justina Bain, which is a cookbook that has 20 recipes. Chef Justina will be preparing a three course meal for us using some recipes from her cookbook, Home Cooked Meals with Justina Bain. And these include a starter, a main and a dessert. And as you can see, the table has been laid and we are getting ready to enjoy some good, good food or rather make it before we enjoy it. Of course. But firstly, Justina has prepared three dishes for us because during Christmas we like to enjoy more, more and more. It is not about rice nemshibo. We get to mix it up a little and of course, and firstly, Justina is going to be taking us through what three dishes she is preparing for us. The starter, the main and of course, the lovely, lovely dessert. All right, so um, for our starters, I'm going to make um, cinnamon and nutmeg pumpkin soup. Okay. It is very nice and creamy, mm -hmm. so yeah, looking forward to that. And then for our mains, um, we'll be having uh, fish, grilled fish. We'll, do, we'll make garlic bread okay. and we'll also make a green leaf salad. And then we are going to do the mighty classic trifle. And we're actually going to start with the trifle because it needs to sit in the fridge and sit like okay. properly before we can dig in later. Oh. Alrighty, and yeah. to me, Justina, that sounds like all of those dishes sound like dishes that Babugele Makaya can prepare um, yes. from the comfort of their homes. They don't need to go over and above to get the ingredients because it's something they can mix and match. Maybe you have it in your cupboard, but. Um, the lovely trifle, um, can you just start and take us through so that we can prepare it and move on over to the other dishes. All right. For our sweet tooth people, we have the classic trifle. This is definitely a classic. This dessert literally always makes it to the Christmas lunch table. I mean, what is Christmas lunch without trifle? It is so easy to make and it is made of layers of cake, jelly, custard, yogurt and fruit and the ingredients are swiss roll jelly custard and plain yogurt and of course your fruits to make it very decorative okay guys so we are going to start with the trifle um, so for making trifle it's very simple you don't need to have certain ingredients i'm going to be using um, swiss roll today um, our local Lishlangu um, fresh double cream uh, plain yogurt, it is actually super nice and it's local. Mm -hmm. We'll use some, um, uh, some uh, canned um, what's this? peach slices. Yeah. Uh, we'll also use jelly. Okay. What is trifle without jelly? So basically you can use anything. If you have strawberries or any other fruits, it's just a dessert where you just throw in everything. Throw in everything, so, yeah. yes, As long as you layer it right. Layer so and make it beautiful. Of course. Yeah. So um, just get on with it All and right. let's see where you start. What do you layer first? So I start with my 
with my Swiss roll. Okay. I start layering it. I put some on the bottom here. Oops, I think I need a knife. Okay, okay let, let me get you there. Thank you very much. So we'll layer some pieces of, um, of cinnamon. Maybe I can just... Okay, I think this works. I'll put this half here. Thank you very much. I have a sous chef, guys, today. <laughs> I am definitely your helper today. And just Thank as you, you are layer, layering the Swiss roll, mm -hmm. um, what are other classic um, desserts that um, the viewers at home can prepare that are as easy as trifle? Because yeah. we know trifle to be a traditional dessert. It is. And maybe we're tired of trifle now. <laughs> um, what are other um, uh, desserts that they can prepare? There is also a very simple dessert, which is peppermint crisp. Oh, you yes. just layer biscuits, cream, uh, a can of caramel, caramel treats. Okay. They just sell it at Pick and Pay or, in, or any other supermarket. And some um, minced chocolate. That's it. That's you, you don't need to cook. So dessert doesn't have to be complicated no, all the time. No. And I see that you are bringing a twist to this dessert. If you can just <laughs> take us through that. Well, <laughs> I like my truffle with a little something something, you know. <laughs> but you don't have to you don't have to do this. You can use orange juice if mm -hmm. you if you want, but I like using a little something something. So here I'm using some nice whiskey. I'm just pouring it over my first layer here. Okay. And it, it's very nice. Okay. It so it nice. soaks into the, <coughs> to the, the Swiss cake. roll. Yes, and it does. what taste can you say it gives that's different from Ooh. if you don't put it in First there? of all, it has that nice kick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, whiskey is good. Whiskey is good. I love whiskey. So it's, it's what I like. Yeah. But if we've seen um, alcohol being a substitute ingredient in yes. other dishes. Yes. People yes cook with wine they make stews with wine yes I cook with a lot of alcohol mm -hmm. I use a lot of wine to cook mm -hmm. I use beer as well okay yeah so yeah. I've, I've <laughs> I actually saw some was it some shell muscle dish things oh that you made a measure and, and I don't know what that is in English I'm sorry but it's a measure it's like a shell shell seafood thing sort of mm -hmm. where uh, you just boil it with the beer mm -hmm. and with onions and and that's it and you are still layering oh, your Swiss roll just there. around your dish? Yes, yes. But I think I'm going to just actually start pouring this stuff because okay. this is not standing for some reason. So I can just start with... Actually, before that, let's just quickly make some drinks. Oh my goodness, I'm of so course. sorry. Our let's hands are washed, our hands are clean. <laughs> yes. I told you, this kitchen is going to get messy so it won't be as you see it at the end because <laughs> what's good food without a messy I mean, kitchen? Yes, so I'm just doing something very quick and simple for us here. Um, at the moment, I'm pouring um, lemonade. You can use sparkling water or Sprite, Sprite or tonic water. And um, I'm putting some passion fruit, so I'm making a passion fruit and lemonade drink. Very okay. simple. Um, that should be okay. So I'm not putting a lot because our lemonade is already sweet, so it has enough. Um, it has enough sugar, and I'll put in some ice for us, just to make it more nicer and cool. And I see that your ice is like turned up a bit. <laughs> you have prepared it in a very very different way. This is how you can make just a simple passion fruit and lemonade drink. You know, turn it up a notch. Yes. You have put in um, some edible flowers there. Yes, so I put in some edible flowers into the ice tray and okay. just freeze that. But you can also put in, so I'm adding some granadilla pulp. Okay. Since we have a passion fruit drink, passion fruit is granadilla. Okay. It's just another name, so we're using this. So Help. what you're saying is <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. And yes. I can see you have a lot of flowers. Yes, there. I have some garnish here. Mm -hmm. We have to make it pretty. So I've just added some lemon slices. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna add some mint to our drinks. Um, mint just gives a very nice refreshing, refreshing taste, taste to the yeah. drink. Um, I'm adding mint and I have more edible flowers and um, my edible flowers and mint are actually from Fresh Leaf, mm -hmm. they are also local 
they have the freshest in the country yeah. i can guarantee you that i am definitely definitely going to testify to that because i can see these they look so fresh they you are know, it looks like you could just gobble it <laughs> all at once yeah they they have the freshest and there's our drink done <laughs> that is simple and easy so you get to enjoy your drink while you are cooking yes Thank you. yes cooking so to a Good Christmas last special cookie. All right. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Mm. Okay, mm, that is actually that, very that, nice. That's very nice. It yeah. actually has a bit of a difference from the OG um, uh, passion, passion fruit and lemonade. lemonade. True. <laughs> yeah. You can always add a twist to anything just by adding up anything. So I think I'll need your help here. All right. To help me hold up the um, the Swiss rolls on While the sides. You stack. Cause yeah we need them to be on the side okay yes thank you so i'll need yeah i just that pull one. that up <laughs> oh my gosh and All that right. one okay mm -hmm. thank you so i'll start with my um custard so as i said guys we're just pouring this dessert it's just pouring pouring so if so they now like, they can prepare their own homemade custard. Yes, I also usually make my own. It's mm. actually even in my recipe book. Okay. But for today, I thought I want to show people what you can really use to make it like simple. Quicker. Yeah, and quicker. And now we are going to add a layer of, look guys, so creamy. It's lishangu, full fat, um, plain yogurt. And apart from being creamy, it is super nice as well. Super, super nice. Locally produced. Yeah. What are other um, local brands that you like to keep in your kitchen besides oh, Lishungu yes. and Fresh Leaf, which you've already I mentioned? Always have, <laughs> I always have Mlembe Honey. Yes. <laughs> it is so good. It's organic. Okay. It is so good. I always have, um, I use President as well. I also use, um, what do I use? Um, I can't remember the others, man. But I use I use quite a lot of um, of local stuff. A lot a lot of um, there's this mealy mill that I love. It's also local. I forgot the name. Um, I think it's from Southern Trading. Yeah. Yeah. But I I believe that the closer you get it, the fresher it actually is. True. 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 Because we've seen from the from the herbs and the garnishes um, from. I think you can let go. From fresh, from fresh leaf. leaf. Yeah. Giving us local is local. Even my um, alcohol, when I my my beer, I I usually use. I can use Sibebe or Castle. Mm -hmm. They are very nice to cook with. Okay. So yeah, we do have local produce that is actually very good. All righty. Yeah. Um, now you have layered your Swiss roll. Um, just taking you back a bit. Mm -hmm. um, you use Swiss roll, but there are other substitute things that. Um, Babugil can use. You yes. know, we've seen trifle with Boma Mary biscuits. We've seen trifle with literally anything. Anything. You anything. Know? I love the Swiss. The only reason I love the Swiss roll, it's a normal cake. So trifle, you just put any cake. Mm -hmm. You can cube it and throw it in there. Okay. But I love Swiss roll because you know, I like a little bit of drama. And it has to be cute. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more than that. It's just a cake. You okay. can literally put in anything. Okay, yes. and. As we were speaking, you know, you mentioned that you make some dishes, and I went through your cookbook. Uh, you make some dishes that even I can't pronounce, and most of your dishes are Mozambican. Like that's yeah. what I've, I've picked up. Yes. Uh, can you tell us where the Mozambican inspiration of cooking comes from? Okay, so um, I'm actually I'm, I'm half Swazi, half Mozambican. Oh, I okay. always say that my mom is Swazi, my dad is Mozambican, so I don't know which of either I'm more, but <laughs> <laughs> I always say that I'm half half. And growing up at home, my dad taught my mom how to cook Mozambican food. We mm. grew up eating Mozambican food. And uh, my family is a family that cooks a lot. Okay. So I grew up around food and yeah. I, so I love that's where the inspiration food. for Mozambican food. Um, mm -hmm. So now we're continuing over to the canned peaches. You've been stacking. We yes. have your Swiss roll um, mm -hmm. with a bit of that ting that you like to add. <laughs> uh, yes. We have your custard. We have your plain yogurt. Uh -huh. And now you will be adding. Now I'm just adding my fresh my um, my peach slices. So I'll just put them and layer them in here. 
because they add a nice fruity, fruity situation, fruity taste to the to the dessert. Mm -hmm. Some uh, some other people like using um, mixed fruits. Yes, like where you get your pineapple. Yeah, and you can do that. There is no particular fruit that you have to use, yeah. and if you don't use it, won't work out. Trifle works out with literally anything. Anything. Anything you can use. As I said earlier, you can use strawberries literally anything okay yeah as long as there's cake the creaminess the fruits which brings in the freshness you're good because it's all about sweetness yeah. really. yeah and that and is it happens that it's actually not too sweet hey. somehow because <laughs> never um, had a trifle <laughs> that wasn't well, sweet maybe because other people use um like a vanilla pudding yes it, it, it is sweet this is plain yogurt so it, it mellows it down okay yeah so now i'm just going to put in my my jelly, jelly which i actually Classic. prepared um i prepared this jelly last night okay. because uh, it needs to set fully if it doesn't set fully it will ruin your trifle okay. literally ruin your trifle so jelly also you don't need to have specific colors you can just put any colors like i'm doing i'm mixing i'm mixing red and orange but the more the merrier if you have the your greens more the if you have your yes. yellows yes you can throw it in there it looks almost done to me. It is almost done. So what, I, what, what will happen is that I'm going to add another layer of custard on okay. top. And then we'll decorate it and it's done. We are just almost done. So just one thing to, specific, to emphasize, it is important that your jelly sets because if it doesn't, it just, <laughs> it just melts. And you really and it don't soaks want up that. on the Swiss roll. Yeah, yeah, it would ruin everything, and you don't want like soggy, soggy trifle. Yeah. Yes. So now I'm just gonna add my um, custard. Can I please have my custard there next to you? Oh. <laughs> if you like, you can make your own custard, like I do sometimes. We just use this egg yolks. Okay. But sorry, this is um, this is an easy way to do it and on your cookbook you also have you know desserts that you have recipes for there mm -hmm. which are quite easy easy to make i saw something about banana slices yes <laughs> we all have banana That's in our um, houses yes true you know it's if something have, that would yeah. be easy to make that is up. a way of using up ripe bananas because it actually uses um super ripe bananas the black so, ones yes the black <laughs> ones precisely so if you have super ripe bananas don't throw them away the recipe is on my cookbook you just use those um those bananas and it is so good it yeah. is a favorite here my oh. family really loves it and maybe it's much much easier um, to prepare for the kids because you know kids are very picky when it comes to christmas dishes mm -hmm. uh, you can't really impress them i think the food is really for the adults because <laughs> you will have your full on table full of food there and they will just pick a what piece of really chicken want. <laughs> um what are other dishes or desserts that you can prepare for the kids for mostly? christmas yeah um well in experience with my kids they yeah. love pavlova okay which is a dessert that you use um you use egg whites only to make so if you're making your trifle and you use you're using um, the egg yolks for the custard then you don't know what to do with the egg whites keep them for just do the, the pavlova yeah which is a very, it's a christmas dessert it always makes it to our christmas table Always. You whip them up and until yes, they are until they are stiff. So it's a meringue that mm -hmm. is it's a baked meringue. Oh okay. Yeah. And it seems about like we are almost done. Now you just are almost done. adding the granadilla pulp into Yes, just for the top to make it you know just aesthetically to make it cutish. <laughs> just to make it cutish. I mean food we eat with the eye first, right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be beautiful and it has to taste nice. And after using all of these ingredients, mm -hmm. um, approximately how long can you say this can take someone to prepare? Because you know what? There's something with people that cook. They can take forever. People prepare dishes from the previous day onto the next True. day. Um, <laughs> how, True. Can, how long can you say this takes? How long have we taken to prove to the viewers at home that cooking doesn't need to take a long, whole day? Yeah. yeah. If you're using ingredients that, like this custard, is so bought custard, this shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. 
but make sure to make your jelly the previous night. <laughs> Only the jelly needs to be made the previous yes, night. Yes. Other than that, this is a dish that can be prepared in 10 minutes. And what? that is it for our dessert. It's done. <laughs> so you have seen us get down and dirty with the dessert. Now we are moving on to the starter. And yabona when a conflict of interest lana meang bona i pumpkin. Pumpkin jelly veggie baseleni na upega. But um Justina said no, we are making pumpkin soup today. Yes. Can you tell us how does this veggie become a soup? <laughs> That's the nice thing about cooking. Mm. You can literally do anything. anything. You with don't limit yourself. There's yourself. even something like onion soup. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are here doing pumpkin soup today. So I uh, will be using butternut that's okay. already chopped up, but you can use any kind of pumpkin. Okay. Yes. So we 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 fry the, uh, we, we're going to fry some onions, and then we'll add the pumpkin to that and fry it a little bit, and then we add up some stock liquid stock that I'll make and yeah put in your cinnamon nutmeg whip it up up leaf it sorry and then we add cream and that's it that's it I, I you need to really it convince so me yeah, for this one and I you're know. like no you're gonna love it you'll see at you the will. end you're really going to love it um so this these measurements are just according to how much you want to make for your family right yes or can you find, approximate how, how much you use? So here I've got um, one large onion okay. and then here it's two small sized butternuts and I'll probably use 50 grams of butter. So that's the thing with me, I cook with the eye. I, you know, I don't measure Until your aunt does tell you to stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, let's get straight yeah. into it. All right, so now I'm just going to add a bit of butter. So the butter, it, it makes it nice and creamy. It makes mm -hmm. the soup nice and creamy, so you need butter. So, um, yeah. Around. I also saw you have cream, yeah. Yes, yes, because it has to be creamy. Yeah, the cream we added, we added at the end once everything is done, because we don't want it to bubble. We just add it in there whilst it's still hot and, and we mix, mix it up. I'm still like trying to imagine the taste, but it's fine. It, you'll I, be we'll fine. Get <laughs> so um, I've put some butter, maybe 80 grams. Okay. And now I'm just going to add a drizzle of olive oil. Olive oil. And we take this to the stove to. If to we let do it not melt. have olive oil, what can you substitute with um, instead of your olive oil? You can use your normal vegetable oil. It would any work kind perfectly of oil, fine. yeah. And the Any butter, kind of it can be margarine. It doesn't have to be butter, butter. Yes, it can be. But just make sure that it's not only for spread because there are some that are just specific for spreading yes. and not for cooking. Okay. Yeah, make sure it's for cooking as well. And then now we will move on over to the stove. Mm -hmm. and now we'll melt the butter. Okay. Well, once it started melting, then we'll put in some onions. Okay. All right, let's, let's get, get cooking. cooking. Now we have our butter melting. We are now going to chop up some onions for the um, for the soup. The onions you don't need it any specific uh, shape or whatever. You can do any shape that you want because at the end of the day we are going to be bleating um, the whole thing. So anything. Okay, this is a very interesting starter because you know soup has to be served hot. Um, yes. But what are some other recommendations that you can give when it comes to starters, especially starters that will not need you to go to the stove? Okay, you can make, um, there's this wraps that I make. Mm -hmm. um, it's literally cheese and ham, lettuce, sweet chili, and the wrap. So I call them ham and cheese rolls. Yeah. You, you roll the whole thing and then you cut them into small pieces. Okay, and yeah. they can enjoy. Done. And maybe you can put, since there's, you said there's lettuce, right? Yes, yeah, so you put the wrap, mm -hmm. you layer your lettuce, mm -hmm. but before the lettuce, you can spread some mayo okay. on the on the wrap or pesto. I love pesto. Yes. Or you can put pesto and then you put your lettuce. Mm -hmm. Then you can put your ham, store-bought ham, um, any kind of ham. It could be black forest ham or just sandwich ham. And then or just even slices. bacon maybe. If even you like. bacon, yeah. Even bacon you can. Just make sure it's not like too dry because you'll need to roll it. Okay. Yeah. I hear the pot is crackling, so we have yes. our butter going. Yes, and you is. still have your onion there, which you said you will be adding after your butter has melted. Yes, yes. So now we are going to put onion in the pot. Mm -hmm. So it's just one large onion. I'm adding it to the pot here. Oh, it's already beautiful. 
It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just butter and onion. Just butter and onion. <laughs> Just butter and onion. And the lovely thing about cooking is that you do not have to get one dish going at a time, you know. You can definitely multitask, which is what, you know, we're, we're basically doing while the dessert is going. We're coming back to the starter. And now while we're preparing the starter, you will mm -hmm. see, they will get to see um, a bit of the main creep in while yes. that is going. Yes. So yes. Um, you've already told them the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And you'll be taking us through that as we go, but yeah. I think we should just move on over to our main dish. Okay, all right. Yes. All right. So um, for our mains, we are going to be having, well, making first mm -hmm. before having. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to be making garlic bread, cheesy garlic bread, um, fish, and uh, a green leaf salad. Simple. Simple and straightforward. Okay. All right. Yep. For our starter, we will make a luscious pumpkin soup with a hint of cinnamon and nutmeg. It is one of her fa family's favorite things to eat. This is the most amazing pumpkin soup you will ever try and it is easy to make. You will need the following ingredients to make the soup. 50 grams butter, one small sized onion, two small butternuts, 2 cup chicken stock, half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, salt and pepper, roasted pumpkin seeds, chopped herbs, and a quarter cup of cream. Actually, it smells it's not nice. <laughs> Thank you. So now the stock is ready. Once the stock is ready, um, we can just start by adding. Let's go season our our, our soup. So we have nutmeg, cinnamon, powdered cinnamon, salt, and pepper. Salt and pepper is the basis for any any, any, any yeah, dish. Yeah, any dish. Okay. All right. Let's come over. Back to the stove. Yes. So I'll start with my black pepper. Okay. Doesn't matter which one you start with. <laughs> it's all going in there. Black pepper's done. We'll put in some salt. So this soup is really nice, guys, especially for winter nights, cold winter nights. Mm -hmm. Even though here in my home, we don't wait for winter, winter nights. <laughs> to You're have having it. it any day, any time. Any day. So now I'm adding a bit of cinnamon. So um, when adding your seasoning, make sure that you add enough, but don't overpower the pumpkin because okay. you still want to taste the pumpkin. the pumpkin. So now I'm just going to add a pinch of nutmeg. Nutmeg is nutmeg very is strong. strong. So a pinch Anything must be can a pinch. Go wrong. <laughs> True. A pinch must be a pinch. We'll put this over here and we need to mix in our seasoning. Thank you, Mama. So now we put in the stock. So it's drenched in liquid now yes. and it's going to boil. Oh, look at all that yumminess. Now here we go. We have our pumpkin. We're going to cover it and we'll check it in 15 minutes. Okay. Yep. And now, Justina, um, you have home-cooked meals with Justina Bain. Mm -hmm. What inspires someone like you to actually go into making a cookbook because that is a very challenging thing to do it is. i mean as a chef we have seen chefs run for the longest years but they do not have cookbooks yeah how what inspired you and what encouraged you to take the step to make a cookbook especially since hey we saw that you launched and quickly quickly your first print run sold out yes. it was just <laughs> like you know uh, a spectacular experience um, yeah. to watch um what inspires this? So, um, I had never thought I would ever um, be an author to mm -hmm. start with. <laughs> but I used to do um, live 
cooking shows, okay. which I'm going to go back into doing next year on social on media. social media. So I'd have my followers and people that are not following me watch me cook, mm -hmm. and they would comment. So it would be actually so much fun because I'd be listening it's to loud music. <laughs> yeah, I'd be listening to loud music and cooking, showing them how to how to make whatever food I, I was making that day. Mm -hmm. And then they started asking me to make a recipe book. Oh, okay. So it started from there. So you I had was to like, list the things. You might as well just put it in. Yeah, I was like, I cook already. Why not write it? So I started writing the book. And yeah, here we are. <laughs> All right, hey, let's move on. But I have one interesting question mm -hmm. um, for you. Um, what are some ingredients that you use in your cooking that people may find weird? You know, like I did see one myself um, in my tapa. <laughs> I was like, what is yeah. this? Because it looks, I don't know, gusharish. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't know how to describe that it. That is the nicest thing you can ever have in your life. And matapa. explained what is it really. So matapa, it's cassava leaves. Which are crumbled. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. I know Siswati Matapa is a root bulb yes. thing, but the Mozambican Matapa is the cassava umchumbul. Lamakembe okay. alumchumbul. Okay. Yeah. So siakanza in a in a wooden mortar like kubol lolom lolom kulun. Yes. Lo salapans. We siakanza with garlic. Oh, and okay. then it becomes this fine paste, okay. and you cook that like a pesto, basil, like a pesto, pesto yeah. yeah. And you cook that with um, coconut and 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 peanuts. Oh. It is so good. Maybe one day, if you get the cookbook, you will get to it is taste amazing. all of that. Okay, <laughs> it let's is amazing. now move on over to the main while that boils because yeah. I know it has to go on for a little while, mm -hmm. and you know. We can't stick around for one dish, so let's move on and prepare yes. this festive dinner. <laughs> and for our main, we start with a cheesy garlic bread. This cheesy garlic bread is one of her favorite things to eat. It is also easy to make, yet packed with flavor. Soft on the inside and crunchy on the outside. And to make it, you will need one French loaf, two garlic bulbs, 150 grams of softened butter, olive oil, one cup mozzarella cheese, chopped parsley, half teaspoon of paprika, and salt and pepper to taste. This kitchen is definitely, definitely heated. And one important thing is that it smells so divine because that pumpkin soup is going, which I am more than excited for. But there is many, many other dishes to be excited for. One thing Justina said today is simplicity. And that is definitely what she will be giving you for the main. Um, right about now, we are delving into the main. I see you have cut up some bread, a bit of butter, garlic. Everything is ready, ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. Can you please take us through? This is Tole Gelela. Yes. So can you please just take us through your garlic bread, cheesy garlic bread yes. that you'll be preparing for us? <laughs> yes. Um, so now we are preparing our garlic bread and for the garlic bread we'll use butter, um, roasted garlic, so I roasted the garlic for an hour at 180 degrees inside a foil. So what you do, you just cut it on top, you sprinkle some salt and some olive oil and then you close it in a foil and put it in the oven for an hour. And then I'm also going to add fresh parsley in but here. Sorry, you did say that it's not a must. If you have yes, the yes. crushed garlic, it's perfectly fine. Yes, it's it's not a must to roast it, but, but you the know, flavor. <laughs> it gives roasted that something tea. something always brings a lot of flavor. Yeah. So today we're actually going to be using uh, two bulbs of roasted and a little bit of um, garlic paste. Okay. Yes. So we're also going to add some fresh parsley, paprika, salt, pepper, and some olive oil, and that's it. Oh, and mozzarella, yes, the cheesy parts. Okay. We cannot forget yes. the cheesy parts. The task that you have given me to grate yes. is beautiful, beautiful mozzarella. But if you like, I'm sure you can go for cheddar or... Yes, you, yes, you can, or even without the cheese. It's, it's still works. Still, yeah, it still works without the cheese. I just like it cheesy. Okay, mm -hmm. I think let us get into it. What I know is that um, there's also, you know, you can get um, garlic bread already made in store. Yeah. And what can you say we can zhuzh it up with maybe if you get that one from the store because mm -hmm. it usually just has the butter only. 
Um, what are some things that you can add to make it better? Um, you can just like it all. It always comes cut yes. already with the butter. You can add the cheese. Okay. Yeah, you can just add the cheese, but homemade is always good, guys. All right. And it doesn't take a lot to do. Let's see you work your magic. All right. So um, we have our butter here. I'm going to just squeeze in my um, roasted garlic. They, oh, look, look at, at the way it oozes out. Oh, my word. This is exactly what I live for, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Moments like these. Yes. I know it looks all messy, but oh, that she will tell you everything. guys how, yeah, <laughs> how this will taste. So I'll squeeze another one. Oh, my word. Look at that. Coming out just I right. love it. And I think the char from the oven makes... It, even it has better. to have the char. I mean, why do you roast it anyway? <laughs> For me, it actually smelled like it was meat. <laughs> when you put it next to me, it smelled like yeah. you know, meat that has garlic in it. Yeah. But it, it was just garlic. I could literally just you eat can. it. <laughs> <laughs> you can literally take a slice of bread and, <laughs> and paste it with yeah. this garlic. It is so good. So now I'm going to add some garlic paste. Very, very fine. You don't have to use a fine like garlic paste, you can just use um, crushed um, garlic. I like the garlic paste because it's so soft, like so fine. I can tell. Yes. This one is a special one because I, <laughs> you can't get yes. this one anyway. Yes. <laughs> In Mozambique, it's available. When yeah. you go there on holiday, make sure to get it. So now I'm going to add some salt. So there's different ways of making garlic bread. Mm -hmm. So today I'm doing it like this, but sometimes I use the long French loaf. And then I, you I slice I it I slice up. it not all the way down, and then you I open up the and, and add the butter and, um, and, and, and the mozzarella. And then that one, you have to like pat it with a little bit of water, put it in foil, mm -hmm. and put it in the oven. This one doesn't need foil or it just needs the oven. I've suddenly forgotten my task here. <laughs> <laughs> to grate yes, please the don't cheese. forget to grate the cheese because I'll need it in the next second. So now I'm adding, um, I'm adding some pepper. Guys, like when I cook salt and pepper, I salt and pepper everything. It's like your base seasoning. And what's the one ingredient that you always have? If they said something's running out in your house, it would not be that. Never garlic. <laughs> Never <laughs> run out of garlic in this house. <laughs> Now I'm adding some paprika and I'll add some olive oil, just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. I never not have garlic in this house. And what else? Garlic is, I think for everyone, it's just a standard ingredient when cooking. But what else can you say? You onions. You feel like... Onions, <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> like onions add a lot of flavor to food. Mm -hmm. I do this nice um, onion based chicken. Mm -hmm. Like it's a chicken stew just with onions. It is so good so so good so when you think oh, i don't have enough vegetables to cook don't worry don't worry it's onion the based cookbook. yes <laughs> just onions onions and chicken so now i'm mixing up here this because i wanted the garlic to like go in here so the butter has to be soft so that you get this nice uh, spreadable spreadable mixture now I'm going to add my fresh parsley here, mm -hmm. and then I need my mozzarella cheese. The mozzarella lady <laughs> I think is it's done. Late. It's done, yeah. So I'll add it in here. I hope this is enough. It should be. Thank you very much. So now we have this. Look, she did a good job. Oh, so you add the mozzarella I into the spread. I add the mozzarella into the spread, and then I leave a little bit. Oh, just to sprinkle on top. On top. Oh, here I was thinking that maybe you want to spread it and then after add the cheese. No, I, I add everything together. Okay. And then I spread everything. <laughs> you know, conventional ways of doing things. Yes, and you can add it on top. You'd still come up with the same result. Mm. It's just a different way that I make it. Mm. Otherwise, there's nothing... And then you just move on over to the spreading. Yes, so now we are going to spread this mixture over the bread. Okay, so you talk about your mom as one of your greatest inspirations. Oh my and God. why <laughs> would we even complete this show without mentioning her? True. Um, can you just tell me um, the inspiration that you've received from your mom, you mm -hmm. know, her raising you? Did she teach you how to cook? Um, is all you know because of her? Well, my mom is my mom is a super mom, guys. <laughs> I love you, mom. <laughs> She's a super super mom. Mm -hmm. I don't know how 
she did a lot of things, but she made them. She's she's very strong and um, she's hardworking. Mm. She's hardworking, yeah. She's hardworking. Her, her, her way of being makes me want to, I hope one day I can get there. Just, <laughs> if just you a can little achieve bit. a quarter of what yeah. she has. If I can achieve a little bit of what my mom is, I would have like done my job in this it's like she's she's the loveliest person you can ever meet she's she's the best that is wonderful that she's is always pushing us to to do our best you know to even when like i i doubt myself a lot all mm. the time even when i do she's always pushing me now i want her to be my mother because <laughs> what <laughs> yes, she's, she's so well of her she's, oh, she, she's really yeah. a super mom she's a super mom yeah okay and you mentioned hard work there one thing that you do is definitely definitely work hard because you know you run a business amongst you know just being a wife a mom mm -hmm. um you have clear aura besides cooking you also bake your yes. kitchen is always heated i know you have to make <laughs> supper this side you have to deal with clients True. this side um can you tell us about your business is it kia aura kiora yeah. <laughs> people have well it's kiora Oh, okay. Kiora is the correct way to say it, but it's just simpler. Like people prefer to say Kia Ora. Kiora, okay. Yeah, it's Kiora. And um, with Kiora, we do cakes, catering, baking, a lot of desserts, you know, all those kind of things. Okay. Yes. And what does it take to run a cooking business? Because. Um, Every, I always tell people that every single job is hard. There is no job that's maybe slightly better than the other. Uh -huh. Cooking is also a very difficult job. Um, yes. What does it take from you mm -hmm. to, to run a baking, catering, a, and I'm just I'm live life? An assistant. <laughs> and, and also just live life yeah. in between all of that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not like an easy journey, obviously, it mm. has its ups and downs. And um, cooking is difficult, but not really, yeah. because um, you have to love it. Passion. I always tell people mm. that if you don't have passion for cooking, it's probably not the right thing for you, because it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. But for me, I just have fun preparing the, all of this. All right. A lot yeah. of fun. So now I've put my bread in here. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of the mozzarella on top. Okay. And then it goes to the oven at 180 degrees for uh, 8 to 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. As, as soon as the, the cheese melts and I have a few brownish parts in the bread and then it's done. Okay. Also, done. the best bread to use is not fresh, fresh, fresh bread, bread to make, the, um, to make the, um, the garlic bread. What do you mean by not so fresh bread? Um, because um, not, I wouldn't say stale bread, but bread that has been there for a few days gives you the best kind flavor. of bread. Yeah, okay. a lot of flavor. All righty. Justina said we are heading on over to the oven. Yes. Eight to ten minutes it's only. Ready. And then we will come back when this is ready. So you yes. won't see the oven part because you know what oven. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> and then we'll head on over to our fish and mm -hmm. our green leaf salad. Yes. And that will be it. We have already done so much in this kitchen. I feel like right without even continuing any further. But anyways, um, we are heading back to our starter, which she, was, she has prepared in a stock that smelled lovely. If I could transport you into this kitchen, trust me, I would. Without wasting any time, Justina, please, um, can you tell us what is the last step to make this soup out of this world? <laughs> All right, so the soup is basically done. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do now, we are going to split it into a very smooth um, consistency, mm -hmm. soupy consistency, yeah. and then we are going to add some cream, okay. a little bit of cream. Do what you must. All right, here we go. That steam, Ooh, the gosh. smell, the <laughs> aroma. <laughs> Smells so good. So let's split away. <laughs> When, when, when you 
when you finish boiling the soup, if maybe you put a lot more stock than needed, you what you drain. what you do, you just you just put yeah you drain it a little bit and put the water aside don't tip it because oh, as okay. you are bleating then you can check the consistency if it's the one you want good if not you can add you the can liquid. make it yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. some pumpkin seeds mm -hmm. um, they're not going directly in there they're no, just for garnish garnishing. purposes yeah okay so for garnish we use the pumpkin seeds the fresh parsley you can use any herbs that you want and um, cream okay <laughs> So if you don't have a hand blender, you can just put it in a normal jug blender and just be careful because <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. So you have to follow the manufacturer's um, rules and guidelines on how to bleed hot food. Okay. So it's done. Oh gosh, it's all done. <laughs> all right, it's done. I don't know. <laughs> it's not everyone who has these, I think, these machines. I think it, actually, that's a good point. I think it's not seven. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of cream in, 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 the, in the soup. So here we go. Just a little bit. And then... We mix it all up together. Even our bread is out. It's smelling divine. <laughs> you know, Segashanga? Yes. So I mix in the Ooh, cream. That looks Look at absolutely that. amazing. That looks absolutely Look at the consistency. It's wonderful. So I could tell because I've done it like <laughs> more than a thousand times. times. <laughs> and I can tell like if the liquid is enough or we need more or whatever. So this is for me. I love it's this perfect. consistency. Yes, I don't love it when it's too thin. Too thick. Too thick, thick or th yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is perfect for me. Okay. So our soup is done. My mouth is watering. I know it tastes so good, guys. Can't wait for you to try it. Yeah, because <laughs> that right now it smells n a bit nothing like pumpkin, but maybe it will give off a bit of that pumpkin taste. Yeah, yeah, it as definitely we go should. On. It definitely should. Alrighty. All right. So now we are going to move on to our garlic bread, mm -hmm. which is ready, crunchy on the outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> Crunchy on the outside and definitely soft on the inside. Just for, you know, just for drama. <laughs> we'll add a little bit more pasta. <laughs> with food. With food, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> with food. I'm so dramatic with my food. I, it, it must be cute. Mm. So we add a bit of parsley. And what you can do with this bread is simple. Cut it into some you know, nice slices. Nice, nice slices like that. Can you hear that crunch? like that mm. yeah okay that's it it is until it's done. enough for the family yes and then you're all done and now we get to um we're going to plate our starter we're going to plate our um garlic bread mm -hmm. um after we make uh the fish, uh, the fish. and the um, green leaf salad yes which yes. is two minutes tops yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ki I'm kidding, obviously, <laughs> yeah. but it shouldn't take long. You know, we had this discussion that sometimes people over um, prepare meats, certain True. meats, especially with like fish. Is a clean a lange cut? Yeah. So if fish now, kabang si peganjes kastas ganan. All right. So it depends on the size of the fish. Mm. So if you have and the type of fish as well. Yeah. So um, if you have fish this size. You probably need between 10 and 15 minutes. Seafood is also another one of her favorites. This grilled fish is incredibly flavorful with only just a few basic seasonings. And to make it, you will need one whole fish, a bulb of crushed garlic, two juice of lemons, one and a half teaspoon of powdered chicken stock, salt and pepper, 50 grams of butter, one tablespoon cream, a handful of parsley, quarter cup 
and one tablespoon of olive oil. After a long day of slaving away in the kitchen, the delicious food is definitely a reward. And I think this is the most important dish. You know, sometimes you do not make it to dessert and sometimes you do not want the starter, but the main you are definitely, definitely invested in. And for our main, um, Justina did say she is making us a lovely fish, you know, with a twist to it, um, because she, she mentioned stock in it, which is very, very new to me. And she's, doing the classic green leaf salad you know i'm not seeing anything out of the usual but justina you can take us through your ingredients and just get on with um, marinating your fish creating your magic okay all right so we are going to start with the fish mm -hmm. so normally i would marinate the fish three hours before i i cook it okay but because i'm wanting to show people how to like prepare the fish okay. itself but this one it's, a, it's already clean mm -hmm. so I have this sea brim fish so um, it's easier to use a scissors you basically have to cut out all the, the, the yes on the sides okay. just um, you cut out all this extraness and okay this one is clean you open it up here and you remove all the intestines and the parts on ar around the head and the next thing you have to do is just like cut slits on your fish so that when you're putting your marinade it can you put no in go the in. yeah yeah yes mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so the fish is done so now i'm going to make my marinade mix for the fish so i use basic ingredients that you probably most definitely have in your pantry mm -hmm. um which is garlic lemon salt and pepper and some powdered stock that's, that's it. it that's it yeah and let, let's not forget that this powdered stock is nothing complicated. It is just penny. Yeah. <laughs> Why is yeah. this your favorite, actually? Because um, I feel like the salt. We use it a lot in Mozambique, oh, like okay. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just used to using it. But there are other different uh, powdered stocks, like yeah. in a in a parmen has mm -hmm. powdered stock as well. So you can use any. But this one is the cheapest, and you can get it also, absolutely true. anywhere. I think it's a rand a packet. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very, very... So you're adding your garlic. Affordable. So I'm adding my garlic in there. Next, I'm going to add my stock. Mm -hmm. Around two teaspoons. <laughs> I'll add salt and pepper. I'll start with my salt. What are some healthy options that you can provide for our, you know, cautious eaters? Because there are some people who are vegetarians mm -hmm. you know for them to also have a nice you know festive dinner lunch or whatever yeah um, what are other options that you can recommend for them because you know it's not everyone who eats meat True. and it's not everyone who eats who likes garlic most yeah. importantly because I know a few people who don't yeah don't yeah, eat true. garlic at all that's true so um, if you don't like garlic you can simple just use salt and pepper for your for your meat mm -hmm. and um, for a dessert you can make pavlova mm -hmm. and um, I made this beautiful pesto pasta that can actually be a Christmas meal it yeah. is very good it is very good so it's just it was just coriander pesto and um, creamy mushrooms okay yeah yeah so you can and that do is that. it for your vegetarian for your vegetarian yeah non-meat eaters okay yes so i'm putting salt to the fish first because <laughs> we wanted to have salt <laughs> i guess and this now can be any fish any type of fish yes okay any type of fish so now i'm just going to start i start with putting in the marinade in the slits okay because um, I want the marinade to go all the way. We don't want to taste it just on the surface, like on the top part of the fish. Mm -hmm. We have to taste it like in every bite. And you know, Justina, we've been in this kitchen for quite some time, but what yeah. I love about you and your cooking is that you just glaze through it so quickly, which we did get to witness um, when you were part of the Luchu <laughs> cook or um, yeah. you were the second winner, um, runner up there yes. with King Terry. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> was that your first um, experience of speed cooking? Because it was a <laughs> challenge. And what can you say also challenges you in the kitchen sometimes? Um, 
Yes, uh, for the Luju for the Luju competition, it was my first time going into a cooking competition ever in my life, mm -hmm. and I really had a good time. I seriously enjoyed it. It was so good. It was I challenging. I remember you left, and they had to call <laughs> you. Yes. You made it through. <laughs> oh, you know what I know. <laughs> I left because yeah. I had to uh, catch a flight, catch a flight to back feeling. to Joburg. <laughs> I'm so, yeah. so yeah, it was it was very it was challenging, but um, it was a learning experience as well. We mm -hmm. learned a lot. I get I got to meet um, sh other chefs who are very awesome and mm -hmm. good chefs as well. So yeah, it it was it was good. The challenge there was the time yeah. and the fact that I'm not in my kitchen, which yeah. I am right now. So I'm most comfortable, comfortable in my in kitchen. Your kitchen yeah. And yeah. And you also had to, you know, you got that experience with Somizi there. Oh, the yes. Let's not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I was Somizi's sous, sous chef, guys, for a few minutes, but I was. <laughs> <laughs> you can add that to your CV. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. For a few minutes, but I was. So now I'm just going to sprinkle some olive oil because I don't want it to dry. Okay. And we'll cook it at 220 for 8 to 10 minutes because of the size. So this is oh, the baking yeah, tray that the will go on. <laughs> Actually, it could bake in this as well. Because okay. this is a, a baking. It's a, yeah, it's a ramekin. It goes in the oven. And but we can put it in there. Okay. Yeah. So let's sprinkle so some you don't need olive to oil. Okay. Yes, we do. Thank you for your help. Okay. I can't be your I sous chef. I think so. <laughs> you're doing good today. You're your <laughs> assistant for the day. Yes, you're doing very good. So here we are. And that looks beautiful. It does. Just like that, it goes in the, it goes in the oven. And then what you do, here's something quick for you guys. The leftover marinade. Do not throw it away. This is liquid gold. Have you preheated <laughs> so your oven and what's the temperature? Uh, please put it at 220 and, and let it heat up and then we can put, um, let me just help you. <laughs> <laughs> so we turn this and just like that. Okay. It's a bit hot because we were doing the bread there, but yeah. So you take this marinade, the leftover marinade from the fish, don't throw it away. Put it in the pot, just like that and put this aside. Now, I'm actually making a lemon garlic butter sauce, if you were wondering. So there was some left over here as well. I throw it in there. Okay. We'll put this on the side. So I'll put in some lemon. Okay, now our fish is in the oven, yes. getting ready. We said, how long do we keep it in there for? Because, you know, can't be too long. No. So that one we should keep it for eight to ten minutes mm -hmm. maximum because of the size. It's very small. Yeah. So you can do the same thing with hake. You know how you have hake um, fillets. fillets. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you if you would like to, you could marinate it like this and throw it into the oven. Yes. Okay. Yes, you can. Doesn't have to be a whole fish, Babu <laughs> Yeah. Lord so now I'm going to, to add butter days. here because we're making a lemon garlic butter sauce. Okay. <laughs> I'm adding butter. So in there, I have the leftover marinade, some lemon juice, butter. I'll add a bit of salt and pepper. Okay. And then um, once it's cooked, you'll just whisk in a little bit of cream. And that's it. Okay. Yeah. If you like, you can add in the butter, let it melt, and then put in the garlic and cook it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then you add the lemon and um, everything else that goes in here for this fish sauce. So this is your classic garlic, um, lemon butter sauce. Yes. Lemon, yes. garlic, ba garlic <laughs> butter. butter Goes with so, any type so of seafood. So this one is done. It will go on here. And yeah, just leave it and it does its own thing in there. So you can at least have one. Okay. And to have that with, we have a green leaf salad. This salad is all things fresh, crunchy, creamy, sweet, savory, and flavorful. From the dressing to the different textures of the ingredients, this salad can be the main meal. And to make it, you will need green leaf salad leaves, one red onion, cherry tomatoes, julienne carrots, olives, feta cheese, seeds of your choice, 
quarter cup Dijon mustard, one eighth cup of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of honey, one tablespoon fresh lemon juice, one eighth cup of olive oil, salt and pepper to taste. Here we have our green leaf salad, which we are just going to quickly put up together and make a quick dressing for it. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have some lettuce, red and green lettuce. So we throw that in here. I also have some baby spinach. Spinach in a salad. Yes, it is amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm actually almost making my own Asian leaf salad. Mm -hmm. It goes it goes in the lettuce, the spinach, um, coriander. So we are going to put coriander as well. I just love greens like that. I said classic, but this is classic with a twist. <laughs> yes. A, a long so twist. So now I'm just adding some coriander. Okay. We have um, some red Green onions. Onion. So the red onions are sweeter than the normal white ones. Because they're a bit... Mm. Yeah, because you don't want to... You know how they make you cry <laughs> when you're chopping them? Yeah. So you don't want to be crying whilst eating the lettuce. So we just put this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful red onion here. Okay. Mm. And next, we can, you literally put in anything, Literally. anytime. So um, I have this carrots. Mm -hmm. They are julienne. Right. So cutting them thin, like long and thin. So this is the next thing that I'll put in here. And melting away. I think it, is? it just needs a bit of a... Here's a whi the whisk is specifically for the day. Okay, so, can so you please I whisk stir for it me? up. <laughs> yes, thank you. So whilst she's stirring, let's just continue here. So next I'm going to put my olives. You put in your olives. These olives are hopefully peated, but if they're not, they're still good. Next we have our cherry tomatoes. This is okay. so simple, guys. Not even five minutes to tell you the truth. This is so quick. So I'll need I'll need your help here. Once it's all melted and whisked up, um, okay. You just let it cook a little bit so that the garlic can cook. Oh, okay. And then uh, maybe add your three minutes. Then we'll add the cream and a bit of uh, fresh parsley, and it's done. Okay. Yes. So we've added our tomato here. Next, we are going to add. We have some feta. Okay. We just sprinkle some feta cheese. This is super simple. There you go. Feta under 10 in. minutes? Yeah, literally under 10 minutes. So I, it's my preference, I like putting seeds on top. So I have this whole um, booster seed mix from Green Mamba. I just sprinkle it over just like that. We like our salads wholesome in this home. So that's that's that so now let me just quickly wash my hand a little bit can i please have some of the paper so now i'm just going to make a quick i'm going to quickly whip my um my dressing so i'm making a honey and mustard um honey and mustard salad dressing it's very easy to make i am going to put some mayo we we'll put in mayo. Okay. We'll put in mayo. It's a mustard dressing, so we need some mustard. We're going to use Dijon mustard. Okay. That's good in there. Next, we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. I use a lot of olive oil, I know. Just trying to check with the time and how far we are with the fish, you know? Mm-hmm. No, the fish is good. The fish is good. It needs okay. a little bit, maybe five more minutes. Yeah. Because it needs to have that nice, beautiful char, char on top. Okay. Yes. Um, sorry, can I please have a lemon? Okay. <laughs> yes, or just that lemon, lemon juice there. Next, I'm going to add some honey. I already have measured out um, two tablespoons of honey here. So we have olive oil, Dijon mustard, um, mayo, mayo, and some honey. And some honey. Some beautiful honey. 
nice and sweet. Okay, I see you also using local emlembe honey. Yes, emlembe honey. It's very good. Emlembe it's, honey. It's, <laughs> it's local. Mm -hmm. I try to use as much local produce as I can mm -hmm. when I cook. So here I'm adding salt. Let's okay, check I on think our, yep, our sauce is good. So you can turn it off and then we'll just add some cream. Okay. We'll whip in some cream and it's done. So you, you turn it off and then you add the cream? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we've added salt. Now we're going to put a little bit of pepper. Yes, we pepper it and salt everything, guys. And next, I'm going to add some lemon we juice. We salt and pepper <laughs> till we die. We salt and pepper, Anjay, till we drop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some lemon juice in here. So that's it. Can I please have a uh, Something to whisk. Yes, even a fork. Actually, I can get a fork quickly. There's a spoon that you will need. Sorry. Yeah. So we have a fork here. So let's just mix up the stressing. I had a teaspoon here. Oh, there it is. There it is. So there you have your quick mustard and honey dressing, which you can just simple drizzle Looks divine over. Already. <laughs> Thank you. You just drizzle over. There we go, a little drizzle, a little drizzle. And those seeds probably add that nice crunch that you need in they the do. salad. They do, they it do. must be refreshing, it, lo it looks refreshing. We'll put some salt there, and there you go. Here's our salad. And we are basically done for the day. We, we have are. done everything that we needed to do. Yes. And now what is left for us to do is that we head on over to the plating, set the table, invite the family, you know, call them to the table and enjoy yes. the food. <laughs> the most <Of> important <laughs> part um, is that we enjoy the food. But we're going to see the fish come out and mm -hmm. we are done. Yes. It so was, let's check on the fish. It was lovely being in this kitchen. <laughs> I now always excited can to never try. wait for <laughs> the eating part. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to check the fish just to make sure that it's not burning. Okay. No, it's all good. So this is what you want. You want the oven to be smoky because yeah. we're cooking it on a high temperature. Okay. Yes. Otherwise, you don't get that beautiful char that you want. All so right. the, fish, the fish is good. Now I'm just gonna, can, you, can I please have that whisk? that whisk? Yes, I'm adding a little bit of cream, very little bit of cream, parsley, a little bit of chopped parsley. And I think parsley was your star ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, parsley it looks and like garlic it. Yes. was the star <laughs> ingredient today. And it's done. Our garlic was also done. So that is it for these dishes we have made all three dishes the fish mm -hmm. um we are done is almost done the salad looks spectacular thank the you the soup is blended now we'll see your lovely plating skills but yeah Let's see what I've i can't got. wait to <laughs> talk to you more and uh -huh. while enjoying food yes. this time around i don't <laughs> get to watch you make it to enjoy Definitely. it together and you know, just more on who Justina Bain is, mm -hmm. the lady in the kitchen. Yes, that's me. Let's move on <laughs> over. It has been a long day or two if you prepared the jelly <laughs> last night, but we are finally here to see it all and most importantly eat it all justina it's been lovely lovely and um, being in your kitchen today you know Thank seeing you. the flames the heat the aromas it was definitely worth waiting for and i've eaten with my eyes but <laughs> the most important part is when it reaches your in. tongue <laughs> yeah. and this is a dish that i feel like you had to convince me the most with so. i know <laughs> i'm actually looking forward to you trying it because I know you you've never had pumpkin soup and yeah. many other people haven't tried it as well so when yeah. you talk about pumpkin soup it's like oh what's that yeah. but just try it and then you let me know okay I All think right. you'll give us the go ahead and you can <laughs> let's <go>. dig in <laughs> <laughs> well I we have had our lovely lovely starter i think my judgment has changed certainly about how i feel about pumpkin well not that i had ever tasted it but if this is how it will be forever then i think i'm gonna make it the justina way if someone offers me 
pumpkin soup. <laughs> I might just say no because the one that I tasted today was definitely, definitely worth it. Um, now we are in our mains. Can you just yes. take us through what we have for the mains? It's not too complicated. No. Um, but I see different colors on the plate mm -hmm. and, you know, you've got your protein. Um, can you just take us through briefly? Okay. So we have our sebrim fish. Mm -hmm. It is very nice. We, we grilled it in the oven for a short time. And we've I've already drizzled some of the garlic um, lemon butter sauce, but you'll definitely want more mm -hmm. <laughs> because the more the merrier, I guess. We have our nice cheesy garlic bread on the side, and then we have our green um, green leaf salad, which is just lettuce, some baby spinach, coriander, and vegetables, tomato, onion. <laughs> carrot. We saw that being prepared. Yes. Um, I'd firstly like to add some of the lemon yes, garlic go butter before we go ahead because go you said it. the more the merrier. I know. And that looks absolutely delicious. Thank you so much. Here's some I'll for add you. a bit as well. So, um, Justina, just yes. before we dig into our lovely main, what advice can you give someone who is preparing to cook, you know, for their family, for the mm -hmm. festive season? What ingredients can they utilize in their kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, to make a wholesome, if they do not have as much, what okay. ingredients can they use to make a, a wholesome meal like mm -hmm. this? Okay, so um, for like your general Christmas um, lunch that doesn't take too much um, mm -hmm. of ingredients, just mm -hmm. try and make sure that you have just to make a difference, you know, we have rice every day, but to make a difference, you can make potatoes, mm -hmm. roast your potatoes. So when roasting the potatoes, let's say you have uh, maybe roast chicken, it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. So in the same pan where you're roasting your chicken, make sure that you put the potatoes in there so that they roast in the um, chicken fat. Mm. So that's, that's, that gives a lot of, um, of flavor as well. <laughs> How's the bread? Mm. <laughs> the silence says it all. <laughs> I can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's you can do lettuce like we're having. It's yeah. a very affordable, um, economical salad to have, and it's super super nice. Mm -hmm. You can have um, trifle for dessert. So all of those things are budget friendly um, items to have. I'm trying to <laughs> to listen to you, but I can't because I am blocked out by mm -hmm. all of this goodness. It is definitely coming together. Mm -hmm. The garlic bread, I think I get what you, you mean when you say you need to keep it a little bit longer mm -hmm. for it to taste much better because yes. you can taste that. Fresh bread is good, but for this, not as fresh. Mm. <laughs> How's your fish? Mm. Nice and flaky. And it's still nice and moist inside, as you can see. Mm -hmm. That's why um, you have to cook it for on high temperature for a short time if you're grilling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But to substitute the fish besides chicken, you know, we want to switch it up every year. You know, mm -hmm. you can't be having ninja solo every year, full chicken, chicken. full <laughs> chicken. Um, ni, what else can you use besides your chickens, your your fish? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in America, they do a lot of turkey. <laughs> well, I, I was about to say, actually, <laughs> on my table, mm -hmm. on my Christmas table this year, I've already stocked up my, my meaty stuff for Christmas. I'll have gammon, okay. boneless gammon. I'll also have turkey. So normally, I do turkey drumsticks, like full drumsticks only, because then um, we left over with the turkey breasts and everything else, and nobody wants no to eat that. No one wants to eat that white But bread. this year I got a full, uh, a whole turkey, mm -hmm. because um, Boxing Day, I'll just use the um, turkey breast and leftover turkey to make sandwiches, because we don't want to cook on Boxing Day. Yeah, we want to <laughs> relax on Boxing so Day. So you can have your turkey, your gammon. Um, what else are we going to have? Yeah, I think that's what we, we're going to have as our main uh, meats for, for, for Christmas. And then, um, no, you can dig in. Because I, 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 I think yeah. <laughs> I'll keep you it's talking good, so right? that I can eat. Um, yeah. What are some of your childhood memories um, of this festive season mm. and of food at home that you used to have as mm -hmm. a kid that you make till today maybe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, a typical um, Christmas day morning growing up, mm -hmm. 
is obviously a bit different from now because now we wake up and do all the sitting out on the tree, Christmas carols in the morning, uh, opening the gifts. Growing up, we actually used to wake up, um, start preparing for the Christmas lunch, and then we would actually sit and watch a black and white um, Christmas movie. <laughs> Yeah. That was the first thing we would do and then help my mom prepare the Christmas Christmas lunch which used to be some rice, potatoes, roasted meat, a curry, salads, trifle. I've forever had trifle in my life. Yeah. <laughs> trifle. And there's this nice banana split um, dessert that my mom used to used to do like the old the old way. So she would just um, caramelize the bananas and would have that with ice cream. Very, very nice. And usually, just um, before we head on over to our our um, our dessert, mm -hmm. um, what what? How long do you wait after having your meal to have your dessert? Because <laughs> eh, after having like a really really heavy meal, mm -hmm. I think there's a space in between. You don't just bring it all over. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> True. So it depends on how how big your main is. Mm. You know, we had the we had the soup. Now we're having this. It's not like Big, big, mm. a big meal, so you can have it immediately, or you can wait thirty minutes I to, to to have the. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to devour this. this <laughs> to have this the fish. fish, it's good, right? Yeah. Thank you. I think one portion like this is more than enough for one person. It definitely is. It definitely is, and this fish is so good. But I think let's finish up and head on over to our. Trifle. Yes. Oh my goodness. I love trifle. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to have it. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> what a lovely, lovely time we had in Justina's kitchen. But one last thing. We cannot live without this because we saw it being made from zero to hero. I am talking about none other than the dessert. It is here. It is classic trifle but with a twist mm -hmm. you know because she added her own things and she you saw how to make it so Justina <laughs> 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 you know because you did mention that it <laughs> yeah. is so um, if we can just get into it and you know it's our last last dish yeah and um, last thing, Jay, what I'd love to ask you is, what's your message um, to our viewers at home for mm -hmm. this festive season, you know? Um, and for our non, not so cooking viewers, you know, who would love to cook or, um, yeah. and how can they support your business? Because you do have um, Kiora or mm -hmm. Kia or <laughs> Sardini, yeah. um, where you also bake, mm -hmm. um, which is part of dessert type of things. Yeah. Um, you just let us into that. But first, yeah. <laughs> obvious. <Sila. laughs> first things first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to, you know, we all know trifle, you have to go all the way down. Mm -hmm. to try and get everything and it's messy eating as we know <laughs> but you managed yes, one spoon yeah. gave me <laughs> everything <laughs> yeah actually it looks a bit nice <laughs> not as messy right yeah it doesn't look Ooh, that I'm messy to not knock off my glass here yeah, that's good thank you all right team all right so um Obviously, I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas filled with lots of food, <laughs> <laughs> lots of laughter, lots of joy. And, you know, literally you can cook anything that you have in your kitchen. You don't really have to break the bank mm. to come up with a Christmas lunch. And um, it's, it's just um, for, for people that really want to make,